On the 7th of December 1941, the Japanese launched their surprise military strike on the United States naval base at Pearl Harbor. It led to the United States formally declaring war on Japan and vice versa. As the war broke out in the Pacific Theater on the United States mainland, measures were taken against supposedly potentially hostile Japanese as well. In February 1942, President Roosevelt authorized Executive Order 9066, an executive that in practice was used to relocate Japanese Americans to internment camps forcibly. The Nisei, a term to describe Japanese that were born and raised in the United States, were forcibly relocated into internment camps. The treatment of Japanese American citizens during the Second World War is pretty well known even outside of the United States. But what's so curious is that although Japanese Americans were viewed as a potentially hostile threat by mere reason of their ancestry, the 442nd Infantry Regiment fought as part of the United States Army in the European theater. This regiment consisted entirely of Nisei soldiers, Americans with Japanese ancestry. And what is more, it became the most highly decorated unit in US military history. Following the authorization of the executive order, the United States was able to designate military areas, which would give regional military commanders a mandate to exclude any or all persons. Designating the entirety of Alaska and large parts of California, Oregon, Washington and Arizona as military areas, the Nisei, second generation Japanese, were forced into camps. In total, around 120,000 Americans with Japanese ancestry were interned during the war. Crucial was that these people were simply excluded because of their origin. Often the Nisei felt thoroughly American and did not have any ties with Japan at all. But the Nisei on Hawaii were a completely different story. 37% of the island's population and nearly half of its workforce was Nisei. Early 1942, the War Department ordered for all soldiers of Japanese ancestry in military service to be removed. In response, Lieutenant General Dallas Emmons, the military governor of Hawaii, discharged the reserve officers in the Hawaii Territorial Guard. Still, he allowed 1,300 Japanese-American soldiers of two infantry regiments to remain in service. Following their discharge, the reserve officers petitioned Emmons for them to serve the United States during the war. He allowed them to form a new group, the Varsity Victory Volunteers, which was mainly tasked with military construction jobs such as erecting barracks, digging ditches and quarrying rocks. In short, disregarding the orders from the US mainland, Emmons ensured all Japanese Americans fair treatment as long as they remained loyal to the United States. But meanwhile, Emmons was, in fact, doubting the loyalty of the Japanese Americans if Hawaii were to be invaded by Japan. He requested the War Department to move most Hawaiian Nisei to a temporary battalion on the US mainland. In June that year, over 1,400 Nisei boarded the Madsen liner SS Maui on its way to California. Over there, they were put on trains and sent to Camp McCoy in Wisconsin. Obviously, many Nisei thought they were being shipped to internment camps, but instead, at Camp McCoy, the arrivals were designated the 100th Infantry Battalion, separate, the one Puka Puka, which consisted mainly of former Hawaiian Army National Guard members. The 100th Infantry Battalion was trained by both Nisei and American officers from June until December. The battalion was the odd one out in that it had no parent regiment and was marked separate, clearly because of the distrust of US officials. After eight months of training, the regiment was moved to Camp Shelby in Mississippi. During their training here, they participated in war maneuvers in Louisiana, and due to their exploits and skills showed during these exercises in February 1943, the US War Department reconsidered accepting Nisei volunteers. They decided that a fully Nisei army unit should be created. Okay, so here's the important distinction. While the 100th Infantry Battalion already existed, the opening up for volunteer recruits would result in a different unit, the 442nd Infantry Regiment Combat Team. The War Department used a draft for all cater men that were American citizens of Japanese ancestry who resided in the United States since birth. Interned Nisei on the mainland and Nisei on Hawaii had to sign a loyalty declaration. Around a quarter of all those asked to sign the statement refused. The other three fourths were admitted to the unit. And the total amount of volunteers were nowhere near the expectations of the army command. 
The amount of Nisei that was willing to join an army unit from the US mainland lagged far behind those from Hawaii. Probably because of the internment camps on the mainland, to be fair. The department expected 4,500 submissions, 3,000 from the mainland and 1,500 from Hawaii. Eventually, 10,000 Hawaiian Nisei volunteered with 3,000 admissions, but only 800 from the mainland were admitted. With these men, the 442nd Infantry Regiment combat team became the reality. Their motto, go for broke, was derived from gambler slang, risking it all in one go. It is what these men did. They had to put everything on the line to win the war against the Axis powers, but also win the war at home against the prejudice against Japanese Americans. From May 1943 to February the next year, this new regiment, a mixture of the mainland and Hawaiian Nisei, trained for combat. The Infantry Regiment Combat Team and 100th Infantry Battalion were forbidden from participating in the Pacific War Theater. The only Nisei that the US used here were those that were fluent in Japanese in order to work for the military intelligence service as translator, spy and interrogator. Now, the 100th Infantry Battalion was sent to the European War Theater before the 442nd. They landed at Salerno in Sicily on the 19th of September 1943. Here they participated in the Battle of Monte Cassino and the liberation of Italy. The Battle of Monte Cassino was a major assault that took four months and led to the defeat of the Germans holding the Gustav Line. Nevertheless, the 100th suffered a disproportionate amount of casualties. Due to this siege, they earned the nickname the Purple Heart Battalion because of the amount of Purple Heart medals that were awarded following the battle. The Purple Heart is a decoration for those soldiers that were wounded in combat. As they were sent to Europe before the 442nd, the soldiers from the latter regiment were often sent to replenish their ranks, an acute need that emerged after the Battle of Monte Cassino. By February 1944, after six months of seeing combat, the fighting had been brutal to the degree that the originally 1300 strong battalion only had 521 remaining soldiers. The number of casualties did not just affect the regular soldiers. By the end of the war, the company had been led by 13 different commanders. The next month, the regiment that remained mainly on the US mainland was sent to the European front. Its second and third battalion now replenished the ranks of the 100th battalion, still fighting in Italy. The 100th actively participated in the liberation of Rome in early June. By August 1944, the 100th Infantry Battalion merged with the 442nd. The 100th was allowed to retain its own name, though, due to its exceptional war record. By this time, they had suffered 900 casualties, and the remainder consisted mainly of the 1st Battalion of the 442nd. The regiment saw more combat in northern Italy, forcing the retreating Axis forces back towards the Alps. After capturing Pisa in late August, the division received the order that they would be sent to France to support Allied troops there. They arrived in late September, seeing combat in northeastern France. It is here the regiment participated in the rescue of the so-called Lost Battalion. Okay, so what happened was 211 members of the Texas 141st Regiment, 36th Infantry Division, were cut off from support and encircled by German troops at Vogesen in France. During the rescue mission, the 442nd suffered 800 casualties. Sources vary about the amount of deaths from 121 to around 184, but it's safe to say the unit suffered a disproportionate amount of casualties. Following this mission, the company received its second presidential unit citation, having earned one before their exploits in Italy. The next couple of months, the regiment stayed behind guarding the French-Italian border due to the number of casualties suffered. They literally suffered so many losses that they could not be used as a regiment properly. Eventually, in March 1945, they joined the African-American 92nd Infantry Division. With them, they managed to break through the German Gothic line in the Italian mountains in one day, resulting in their third presidential unit citation. By this time, the war in the European theater was nearly over, and as we know, the unit didn't fight in the Pacific. As such, the war came to an end for the regiment. And by the number of casualties and decorations, it is safe to say that it did indeed fight for their place to be remembered. Alright, so all in all, the unit received 8 presidential unit citations, 21 soldiers received the Medal of Honor, and due to the enormous volume of Purple Heart decorations, like I said, they were nicknamed the Purple Heart Battalion. The Purple Heart is a decoration for those soldiers that were wounded in combat. Nearly one in three soldiers of the regiment did not survive the war. 
In total, within two years, the unit earned over 18,000 decorations with nearly 9,500 Purple Hearts and 4,000 Bronze Star Medals. In July 1946, a military parade was held in Washington, D.C. President Harry Truman pinned the presidential unit citation on the regiment's colors, saying they fought not only the enemy, but also fought prejudice, and they won. About the U.S. Nisei fighting units, General Mark Clark later said about them, I will say about the Japanese fighting in these units we had. They were superb. That word correctly describes it. Superb. They took terrific casualties. They showed rare courage and tremendous fighting spirit. Now, the regiment was disbanded following the Second World War. Still, in December 2011, many former members were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest civilian award for service given out by the United States. They received the decoration for their heroic actions in combat and steadfast loyalty in the face of ethnic discrimination. Every year on April 5th, the so-called Go For Broke Day is celebrated. The reason this celebratory day exists is likely because it was the credo of the 442nd Regiment. The Unis quite literally fought prejudice and they certainly managed to overcome racial bias and emerge victorious. Thank you for watching this video. If there's a topic or event you'd like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in a comment. I would also really like to thank all my patrons for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and want to support my work, consider checking me out on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will already gain access to the exclusive Patreon series. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.